Mr. Oh, also, friends on Zoom, if you can mute, that would be super helpful. Thank you. So, Mr. O'Hara and Mr. Moranya, take it away. Thank you. All right, I'm going to go start tonight. A um, couple of things that I just want to run through. First of all, I wanted to actually publicly thank our Father's Club um, for our first middle school spirit event that happened a couple Fridays ago. Uh, I don't think the dad really understood what I was asking when they accepted the invitation to cook for our boys. Uh -huh. um, and what we started with, what we thought would be like, ah, eh, you know, 40 or 50 of our middle schoolers turned out to be 178 hot dogs, hamburgers, and cheeseburgers that our dads were able to cook, chips. I mean, it was craziness, but it actually was an amazing um, afternoon. Um, I think we finally got out of here a little after six, uh, but really to thank um, uh, the dads just they were they were more than gracious with their time they even stuck to like color coordinated tickets that we gave them and the boys uh just had a blast um following up on that then is why we're doing like this friday just for our sixth graders is a movie night pizza movie night just to give them something else to do uh they're not playing sports here so just to give them one more little taste of some sort of so social engagement they will be in here um watching a movie right after school having some pizza delivered and then the um Invitation went home yesterday. We picked up 5:30 just down the Father George lot out there. Um, just a couple other things that are middle school specific uh, would be our middle school seventh graders are the only ones that still do not have a retreat, and that is Thursday, um, April, oh, excuse me, October 28th, uh, and that's an on-campus retreat. Parents don't have to do anything once it's provided, um, and St. Ignatius will join us that day. And actually, at the end of the day, um, our sixth grade, our eighth graders participated two years ago in the Michael Tassino run, and we're gonna continue that tradition at the end of the day on October the 28th. Um, and more information about that, about Michael will come out um, next week. Um, first quarter ends a week from tomorrow, which is kind of crazy, but it is. Um, and so all of the teachers met today is team level, um, grade level teachers to kind of talk and know that if your students are struggling, if your sons are struggling, you're gonna hear from them again so that we know what's left in that last quarter uh, or the last week of the quarter trying to finish out. With that being said, all the things that, in addition to that is what we're encouraging the boys to do is keep getting involved. And one of those things is Don for Don's. And every day, uh, Monday through Thursday in Learning Commons, there are six, eight high school guys who are there just to sit and work with our guys. No appointment necessary, they just, they're there. Um, and, you know, as the subjects get harder, the one-on-one -on -one gets a little bit more difficult. You have to be very content specific, but with our sixth graders going there, seventh graders going in there, they can do free algebra. They can do almost anything. And again, just utilize the resource we have in there. If they're on a team, football coach will understand that they need to take that time and go in there and get a little bit extra work. Um, again, staying involved, like last Monday, we had the culinary club. We had 32 guys show up, 28 were middle school guys. I think um, the, the head of the program is a little overwhelmed. <laughs> um, <laughs> the sixth graders weren't allowed in the back of the kitchen, but it is what it is. But the more they get involved, um, the model RC club that's out there on Tuesdays and Thursdays, craziness. Um, two last things real quick. Uh, we're the, our middle school drop in the school in the calendar for 11, 5, November the 5th. That's for our 6th, 7th, 8th grade boys only. Um, that's 6, 30, 8, 30 on the 5th. And then two things that I know will be on your minds leading up to next meeting that will happen after next meeting, but more information on our HSPT will be coming out before our meeting on the 7th, I think it is, and winter sports actually start that following week. So we'll get information from Parent Weekly about those two things specific for um, the seventh and eighth graders for sports and eighth graders for HSPT. Brian? Yeah, great. Uh, thanks, John. Uh, I wanna pick up just on something that John mentioned about taking advantage of all of the academic support that's available. Um, so the Dons for Dons group, it was, it's a group of peer tutors that was started by some of our students last year who thought this would be a great thing to provide our younger Dons, particularly our middle schoolers. But it's not just for middle schoolers, it's also for ninth and 10th graders. Um, it can also be for 11th and 12th graders. It's just that uh, at a certain level, um, you know, our 11th and 12th graders who are the tutors, they have an easier time content-wise tutoring for below the 11th grade. But for 11th and 12th grade, we still have a lot of resources available. Um, in addition to the Dons for Docs, there is a peer writing center that also is held in the new student 
Commons. Um, they've been trained by one of our English teachers, Mrs. Ms. Hart, um, who uh, allows them, uh, allows the students an opportunity to walk in with any essay, any paper that they have and get peer feedback. And uh, the tutors have been trained up in, in, in really neat ways. So please take advantage of the Peer Writing Center in addition for Dons for Dons. Um, some students, uh, especially when we see that they're really struggling um, and are looking for an, an extra level of support in coordination with their guidance counselor can be assigned to the National Honor Society tutor. Um, that tutor uh, provides one-to-one -one support as well. And that's for more specialized uh, subjects and for students who are in greater need. Um, finally, as we always say, but I we can't say it enough, there is the math lab available. That's in the math department wing, uh, available every period of every day. So for a student who wants extra help in math, from a teacher who might not be their math teacher, they can walk into the math lab uh, and get that help anytime. So please take advantage of that. Um, again, with that quarter coming up, uh, the end of the quarter coming up next week, uh, they might need that for those last quizzes and tests that are happening over these next few days. Um, just two other quick things before I go through uh, you know, what we have uh, in store. Um, please keep in mind that we're keeping an eye on just where all the boys are socially, emotionally, academically, as especially as we come back from COVID. Um, and just, just to give you a, you know, a sneak peek at kind of what's happening under the hood or behind the curtains here, earlier today, you know, uh, the middle school teachers met, which they regularly do, to say, you know, let's, let's, let's get the sixth grade teachers together. What are we seeing? Are there trends that we're seeing? How are the guys doing? What are their, what are their needs as a whole? Uh, upper school teachers will be doing that as well, right? So we, we create intentional time for the teachers to talk about their social emotional needs, the academic needs in aggregate, in addition to what's happening uh, with our individual students. Um, one thing I mentioned to our upper school students last week during community homeroom is this is the time of year when their behavior begins to, to slide just a little bit. You know, the jitters are over, uh, the days of, you know, making sure that their tie is all the way up, you know, those first days of school. You know, you begin, you begin to see some students where things slide a little bit. And we just reminded them, particularly as you come to the end of a quarter, just make sure that you're crossing all the T's, dotting all the I's, getting all the homework done, you know, coming to school with the shirts tucked in, speaking of dress code, sport coats for upper school students are required starting on Monday, right? Um, so um, please make sure that they're aware of that. It's been published. They know, we tell them, but that extra reminder always helps. Um, just as an extra reminder as well, we know that they might wear outer jackets or uh, or sweaters or even Loyola quarter zips, uh, but at no point are sweatshirts, uh, you know, um, appropriate attire, right? So the students sometimes express surprise at that, but we, we continually remind them of that. All right, a couple of quick things that uh, we have the fall play that starts this uh, this weekend almost May. We invite all students and parents to come out. It's going to be a great show. Um, we have open house on the 24th. We had a great event. Um, and again, um, uh, for friends and family members that you may have, sons who are maybe looking, we, we invite you to uh, point them to our website and our communications about open house on the 24th. Um, for sophomores, we have the Freedom from Chemical Dependency Workshop, FCD, uh, on the week of the 25th to the 28th. What happens during that week is that during theology classes, we have speakers that come from the FCD organization to talk to our students about the realities of substance use and substance abuse. Um, the teachers step out of the room. It's a very open conversation. Students are invited to ask questions, to say comments. It's no judgment. Um, and uh, they, the students end up really having uh, a positive conversation about substance use. For parents on the evening of the 27th, those presenters will talk to parents about what they're, first of all, what they're presenting to the students, and second of all, what they're hearing without saying names. They say, here's some of the questions your sons are asking. Here's some of the comments that they're saying. Here's some of the, the things they're reporting about vaping, about substance use. So I can't plug that enough. That's a great event uh, for parents and an important one as well. And uh, parent event, 27th. Do the, do the parents go too? The, the, the evening. The event. evening. Okay. Yes. And, and what's yes. the date of that? Yeah. 27th and 27th. Yeah. Who does this one? Join the day. Yeah, the students during the day, during their theology classes, 
from the 25th to the 28th. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, there will be a student and parent meeting uh, for college counselors. The college counselor will put on a student and parent meeting on the evening of November 4th. Uh, so that's, uh, again, an important and timely event. Uh, and then a uh, bunch of weighted uh, announcements. Uh, we will have dances for <laughs> freshman, sophomores, juniors, seniors. What? So junior, senior dance, uh, invitational style, homecoming style dance on November 5th. Um, it will be outdoors. Uh, oh. And uh, freshman, sophomore, it will be a mixer style. Uh, so we'll invite a number of girls schools to come on November 6th. So Mr. Slinty will send out that information. All the details will follow. Um, uh, for the juniors and seniors, this was a question that comes up. Uh, students, you know, may bring a date. They may go on their own. They may go stag as well. They wish to do so. All right. Um, so all the details, including, uh, including cost, uh, exact times, all of that will follow very, very shortly. But Mr. Schlichty, working with the class teams, finalized that just three hours ago. So, uh, did, did you say November 5th? Yes. That's NDP's ring dance. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. So... We'll, we'll, that might be a conflict. We'll about it with Mr. Yeah. All right. And that's all. And that's it's the middle school do. drop in, but we were going to make it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Lots of good news there. Thank you, Mr. Moranga. Um, now I'd like to introduce Mr. Matt Trebon. Can I, did I say your name correctly? That's correct. Okay. So that's you are okay. new and you're from the Office of Development. And we're looking forward to hearing what you have to say. All right. Uh, thanks for having me in. Uh, and so it's Matt. I started in July here um, in the development office, uh, charged with managing Lo the Loyola Fund. And uh, I learned very quickly that it's not just that, it's what else my boss asked me to do. He could not come tonight, so he asked me to be here. And uh, we are a small unit, only six people. Uh, at some schools, I will I'll leave my name. That are larger and charge more tuition, they may have 10 to 15 people in their advanced office. Uh, so we're a lean organization, I need low overhead, uh, so we can look for our dogs. Um, like I said, I started in July. I live in, in Silver Spring. I drive 43.5 miles each way here and home, but uh, I feel at home here almost right away. Uh, I'm potentially educated uh, like your sons are. Uh, it may seem if they see Ted Lasso, I went to the same school as the guy who plays Ted Lasso. So oh. I'll set that and have a coffee, but maybe one day your boys can be Ted Lasso. Uh, <laughs> outside of school. Um, you know, there's three things we do here for our boys. One is we want to get them into good college. We want to install values into them, men for others, and we want to bring, bring them closer to Christ. And we do this while being affordable which applies and is reachable for a lot of people. Uh, but as you know, there's a gap between the collecting tuition and what it actually costs to educate your dogs. And that gap this year is 2.4 million. That's what myself, Adam, and the rest of our office are trying to raise. Uh, we call that, put all that money to one fund called the, uh, Lo the uh, Loyal Fund. And that money uh, that comes into it is either goes to whatever you can think of to keep the lights on, uh, to pay for the wrestling team, to pay for financial aid, to pay for teacher salaries, uh, you name it. Um, when people donate to it, they can say it's unrestricted, but it would where they say I want to donate to a certain team or activity or whatnot. And we accept that. Um, there's a lot of ways we raise these funds. Uh, right now, today, this week, we're having our drive to 100. Uh, campaign, which is raised a hundred thousand dollars in five days. Uh, you may receive an email about that. Uh, it's on our website. Uh, just go to our website and look for your email. Uh, we're about two thirds of the way there, um, going through Wednesday. Uh, we hope to be over a hundred thousand by Friday. Uh, last year we got 120,000. So, uh, the bar is high. Uh, we're also going to do an annual appeal in November. And then we also ask alumni for funds. We ask Foundation for funds, uh, you name it. Parents are the number one source after alumni for who we ask. Uh, we understand you pay tuition to go here, but uh, we also have to raise money as well. Uh, we're not doing a gala this year, uh, which was kind of surprised a lot of people. Uh, there's a 
lot of reasons for that. The board decide not to do it. Uh, that may come back. Um, but we are doing things uh, that are more inclusive that some people tend to go to the gallery. Uh, for example, tomorrow I have an apparent social in this very room with Diamondback Brewing, which is owned by one of our alums. Uh, it's actually already full, but if anybody hasn't signed up, they can come. Um, just please don't call Adam, I said. Uh, we're also uh, going to plan a big party in May for those who join the President's Club for Hire. Uh, we had 400 families last year do that. They contribute over 1,500 a year or more to be in that club. Uh, so we're having a big party then. I realize that's not all inclusive. We are going to have more socials like the one tomorrow throughout the year. Uh, if you have any going involved with any fundraising, things like that, please contact myself or Adam. Uh, we have a lot of parents helping out things tomorrow and the other events. Uh, Please call me directly if you want to be assistance. And if I can help you in any way, I would hope so. Thanks. Thank you, Matt. Nice to meet you and welcome to Loyola. Next, I'd like to welcome Mr. Bernie Bowers, our Director of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. And he's going to tell us a little bit about how his department can support our dons. Uh, I'll try to do it as quickly as possible. Good evening. I just wanted to first thank uh, um, Ms. Bell for inviting me here to, to speak this evening. Um, one of the main things, uh, something that Aristotle said years ago, well, hundreds of years ago, probably, uh, educating uh, the mind without educating the heart is no education at all. So, and, and that being said, um, it, it lends to a lot of things here at, at Loyola and how we try to educate uh, your young men. Um, first of all, though, I mean, Step back a minute. I'll introduce myself as I said. My name is Bernie Bowers. I am the director of diversity, equity, and inclusion here at Loyola. I'm also a graduate of the class of 1978. Uh, a couple years ago, um, uh, where things were just a little bit different. Uh, this was actually a senior lounge, uh, bookstore was right there. Um, uh, we had no dress code, no shirts and ties for the next Monday. Uh, we didn't necessarily have that um, back then, but it was still. Uh, the philosophy of what Loyola teaches the boys has never ever changed. So whether we in suits and ties or not, whatever we've learned has never ever changed. Um, within the context of nation education, in my position, I work to really create a community of respect among the students, parents, faculty, staff, and all individuals, regardless of their racial identity, socioeconomic background, religious creed, graphic location, geographic location, gender, sexual orientation. My position really serves as um, I've served under the mission and identity team, um, along with those folks. And as the director of diversity and include oh, no, we eat dinner. I don't I serve know. As a leader in Loyola's effort um, in this area. Uh, my main goal is really to develop uh, an inclusive environment um, which welcomes all of our students, all of our parents, all of our faculty members um, here at Lake. Um, and just a, a quick kind of overview, um, our dedication pretty much to academic excellence um, is really to educate men to serve others in this school. It's really totally inseparable, to be honest, to our commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, it is really at the root of what Loyola's mission is all about. Um, and that is basically to uh, uh, to thrive as a community, um, to create these kids, to make them applicable to all types of different things, whether it is, again, socioeconomical, whether it is their education, whether it is something communal, whether it is something spiritual, whatever it is, we wanna make the kids as well-rounded as we possibly can. Um, and the goal um, is really to build a beloved community um, of connection and belonging. Um, and to tell you honestly, as a part in, ingrained in all that with the mission and everything else, as part of our grad, the graduation goals, which we have goals that are set pretty much for the kids that by the time they graduate, these are some goals that we want them to um, be able to uh, uh, grasp onto. Loyola Blakefield really graduates a, uh, a graduate that grows beyond his own biases, personal prejudice, in a manner really consistent with Catholic teaching. He comes to understand the enriching and liberating 
value of human variety, to cherish human differences, to embrace diversity. Loyola also wants to educate human beings who are able to, um, to feel as members uh, of humanity because they have become critically aware of their own culture, who are capable of, an, of yeah. being joyful, recognizing the culture of other human beings, and relating to others, uh, being enhanced by a variety um, of which their own culture is a part of. Um, interpreted in this way, Loyola can really, um, really provide uh, that impetus to, to, again, building these young men for uh, moving forward and, and, and dealing with social justice, um, you know, as they move forward with their with their lives. Um, I just one couple things. Just want you to consider, if nothing else, of what I said. Consider the likings of diversity um, and inclusion in various aspects um, of attending a dance, so to speak. All right, uh, diversity is where everyone is invited to the party. Okay, equity means that everyone gets to contribute to the playlist, right? And inclusion means that everyone has the opportunity to dance. So thank you for allowing me to talk this evening. I appreciate you. Appreciate all your moms, the moms that are here, ones that are virtual. Thank you all and have a good rest of your evening. Hey, hey, Bernie, what kind of programs are you running? Just to give us some insight into what you are doing for the board. Um, there are various programs and projects that are going on. Uh, we have actually coming up, um, we have students that are involved right now uh, with the Baltimore Student University Leadership Conference that is coming up in November. Uh, it's a conference that's planned by students, um, for students. It's been going on for about 25 or so years, um, uh, produced with uh, the, the AIM schools that are in our area. Um, our boys are very committed to not only facilitating, but also um, uh, attending this particular conference for upper school students. Uh, we have a neighbor's retreat, which will um, is, is grounded on, on social justice um, issues, uh, which we'll, uh, we will be having uh, in January. Um, there are various clubs, activities, affinity groups that the boys can join. Um, I can't tell you uh, uh, how many guys uh, decided that they wanted to, to join the BSU this year um, and, and the uh, multicultural club. And these are clubs that are really, again, a lot of things based on social justice and the things that they want to see that are, that are here at the school, but also outside of the school. So doing service and, and all of those types of different things. Um, uh, it's, it's, it's the programming we just had, uh, the um, uh, Asian Affinity Group uh, just put on and sponsored uh, a, a, a movie night. Uh, we actually went to uh, Towson Commons and saw uh, some sheep. Uh, it was a great opportunity for the boys. All the boys had a great time. Um, and it's never, you know, most of the, all of the clubs and, and spaces here are not just limited based on your ethnicity or whatever. So um, we want to encourage all of the students to, to get involved and to, um, to come with ideas and, and things along those lines. Um, the adults that are helping to moderate those clubs, very open to a lot of different things that are going on. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Mr. Bowers. And I love the dance metaphor. Okay, thank you. That one really makes a lot of sense and hits home. Janice Moore is our chair of DEI for Mother's Club. Oh, thank you, Tina. Yes, if you haven't signed in, please do. Um, Janice is our XX officio, and she couldn't be here with us tonight, but we do have a brand new DEI committee in Mother's Club that we're excited to get up and rolling. So at our next meeting, she's gonna fill us in about that. Okay, so thank you gentlemen for joining us. Have a nice thank evening. You. <laughs> Appreciate your time on a busy weeknight. Um, okay, moving on to the president's report. First, I would like to request approval of the September minutes which are housed on the Mother's Club website under login, just in case anybody wants to refer to them. Can I have a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Thank you. Can I have a second, please? Thank you. Motion approved. <laughs> okay, a few housekeeping items. I'll probably say this every meeting, but please refer to the eWeekly. It is your Bible. When in doubt, if you have a question, Generally, it's in that teeny tiny font in the eWeekly. Um, it's a great resource for all of us. Um, also, 
please know that your sons continue to get information emailed to them through on campus. And I realize that this is a new concept for some of us, if, especially those coming from an elementary or a middle school where we're used to like that yellow folder coming home or important messages being given to both parent and child. But Loyola is doing a good job at nurturing the independence of our sons. So oftentimes they get a lot of information, just them, and it's not in the e-weekly. So they might learn, they might get an invitation to a club or they might get a message from the SGA president about, you know, a forum or a dress down day. So please continue to ask them about um, what messages they're getting. And it does, it's a nice little dinner table conversation. So that's just a, a gentle reminder for that. Um, all of our Mother's Club documents are online under the Mother's Club website after login. There is a see more tab that is elusive for some of us. So they're gonna continue to be updated, but you're welcome to refer to that. Our fall decorating is this Saturday. Very excited. Erica Hines and Tiffany Brown, our chairs are thrilled with the turnout of lots of volunteers and they're in great shape. So this year they were real, we are really amazed by just the wonderful turnout of people that wanna get involved much like they said with middle school and the culinary club, I think people are just so hungry for togetherness and doing things in person. So um, for Saturday, they have all the volunteers they need, but if you um, did not get a chance to throw your hat in the ring for that, save the date for Saturday, November 27th. That is when we decorate for Christmas and we throw out the pumpkins and bring in the Christmas tree. Speaking of Christmas trees, we are hoping to decorate our beautiful new St. Ignatius Hall, which we have no decorations for. So um, I just wanted to throw it out here to everybody. If anyone knows of somebody that is maybe downsizing to a small condo, I don't know, but might have a six to eight foot artificial tree. We're not allowed to have real trees in there for fire hazards. We would be very grateful for that generosity. So just a gentle plug there. Thank you. Uh, Sarah Phillips, um, who is our chair for spiritual development, is going to be leading a prayer service tomorrow, Thursday, October 14th at 1230. The Zoom link was in the e-weekly today. Hopefully it'll be on the Facebook page as well. Um, Don Mom Teresa Blatchley has generously invited all of us again to a Don Mom shopping soiree at her store, Karma, which is located in Lutherville. That date is Sunday, November 21st, Ravens Away game day. It's all day this year, 10 to four. You could pop in and shop anytime. Or if you wanna come from four to six, that'll be private Don Mom shopping. And she's extremely generous and gives the Mother's Club 20% of all sales that day. And last year she had a lot of really cute blue and gold Don Mom specific spirit wear, which was awesome. So there will be a sign of genius coming soon, um, which will just help Teresa plan for attendees and the volume of people because her store is only so big. So that being said, I'm gonna move on. Uh, Jamie could not be with us tonight. So I'm gonna invite our class reps to share their updates. I'm happy to do the game show host and running around the microphone, but since there aren't a ton of us, we probably can, can handle it. So. I don't see our sixth grade reps, Suzette and Jen. Oh, there you are, Suzette. I'm sorry. It's so hard with the mask. Do you mind standing up so you could share your sixth grade update? Thank you. Sure. So for sixth grade, we have the adult social plan for next Friday, October 22nd at 6 p.m. at High Tops. I'm sorry, I don't think we can hear you online because you have the lights in front of us. Oh, true. Thanks, Alien. Thank you, Alien. Yeah. Sure, please. Okay, so next Friday, October 22nd at 6 p.m. at High Top will be our first adult social. So we welcome all parents to attend. Um, and if folks want to bring your donations for the new Don Fashion Show gift basket, that would be great. Uh, we are still accepting donations, and um, we have, we'll have bids and things like that for that to make sure donations can be brought to the social, or you can drop off to visitors. Awesome. Thank you, Suzette. 
And I'm excited for the sixth grade about that cute, like Goonies night coming up. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah, that sounds super fun. Okay, Dana DeVac and Kate Sinclair, seventh grade. Um, we've been pretty busy. We just had a, we put together a sort of a pop-up Sky Zone event for the seventh grade boys last week. And it was a huge success. We started out hoping to get 15 people so that they would open for us. We ended up with close to 50. Um, nice. And they opened it privately for us. And it was a ton of fun. And the kids just really liked getting together. Parents actually got to know each other, which was really fun. On the 23rd, we are piggybacking on top of sixth grade. We are having our parents special at High House. We are basically doing the exact same thing the next night. Um, so if seventh grade parents haven't donated to the class basket yet, um, really at this point, all we need are you know some wine if you have it or some more cash. But our parents have been very, very generous with things that we registered for on an Amazon wish list. So um, we're just kind of filling in gaps and parents have been really generous. Um, what am I that's it. And we're just uh, working um, with the Ignition Mission Office on our service projects. Okay. Awesome. I also really liked how you guys did the poll mm -hmm. to gauge interest for the Sky Zone. I thought that was very impressive of you ladies. <laughs> that was great. That was great. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, Jen Allmiller, eighth grade. Thank you for coming. I so we have the microphones at the table, but our Zoom friends probably can't hear you. Um, we had our social two weeks ago at CBP. We had about I think, seven parents or so. Um, it was a great turnout. Huge turnout. Wonderful. Yeah. I feel like after you know, the last two years, it was great to see two weeks ago at CBP. Um, our gift basket for the fashion show is pretty much complete. So thank you to all the moms and um, the dads from the eighth grade class that have volunteered and donated. Um, and that's pretty much it. We're trying to come up with some sort of a social um, plan of ways to start with that. Okay. Thanks, Jen. Kate Lepley for freshmen. Hi, everyone. We had an option social also at CDP. Thank God they helped us because we had a last minute pivot. I saw that. We were hosting it outside at Riley's. They have on their parking lot called the wood pile which is like kids barbecue and their permit fell <gasps> is that what happened well, first they showed they couldn't accommodate our numbers because we ended up having 120 people at RSP. wow that's awesome and then the lady admitted they didn't have the permit they were hopeful they would get it back we were like yeah we're not going to do that so the people at cbp were amazing we've not planned social yet we made a place they decorated for us they printed a menu with the loyola elm oh on it they gave us outdoor and indoor space to do the rain and they became People needed to be comfortable with COVID. And we ended up having like over 100 people come, which was amazing. It was a great turnout. Um, we are done with the basket. Everything is turned in. We're ready to um, create that. And the next thing on our list is some kind of social for the boys. So any suggestions are welcome because I feel like 180 kids is a lot to plan to yeah. for. And we're getting into the four months. So we really? love suggestions. It's interesting that Sky Zone opened just for the seventh grade. They yeah. 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 Kate, I'm so pumped about that turnout and great job pivoting. Yeah. Well, like, really impressive. Yes. Okay. Sophomore gals, Christy Bleach and Kathy Sachs, thank you for coming. Okay. So we had our parents' social in September. We are now working on our service project for the boys. Our basket for the fashion show is completed and we're done with that. And we have a link for the Harvest potluck on our website. Or not our website, our parent page. So mm -hmm. I think we're, we're caught up. And our sophomore social was at the backyard in South Sand, which was yep. also a really good venue because it offered indoor outside. and outdoor. Outside, yeah. Great job. And it was a great turnout too. Thank you, Eileen. Um, Monica oh, with 11th grade. Um, Monica Enoch. So just um, to be back on the report earlier, well, the college campus is meeting on uh, November 4th at 6.30 in that hall. Um, fashion show baskets, we are not completed. So if you can check out Sign of Genius, um, there's um, information on the class page about that note. So we'll get that in, we'll get that all together. Um, we have a tentative 
PB and J service them on 1215. Uh, the boys are just taking Barnard Deli at 45 before class starts. Um, and then exciting news break dance and the mass job out today is scheduled for March 4th. Ooh. Yeah, that's been very exciting. Um, a representative from uh, job assistance will be here in early December. And information will be distributed in November. Thank you. Thanks, Monica. Okay, I don't see EJ or Mimi. I'm on Zoom. Oh, hi, Mimi. Look behind you. Know, you. I, wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't sure because um, I wasn't. I was told the Zoom people wouldn't be able to talk, but please feel free to share if you have anything. Great, yeah. So um, for the seniors, uh, we had a great uh, first parent social at Bordy Vineyard. Uh, a few weeks back, we had about 40 parents and it was great. Uh, some people that hadn't gotten, hadn't been able to see each other in a good year and a half, it was great uh, reconnecting with folks. Um, we're working on um, generating ideas for service projects for the boys, as well as working on our basket. Um, I did uh, just message our class dean, Vonda Duncan, to let her know about the scheduling conflict with the NDP ring dance. Um, so I was glad to hear you guys caught that on your end too. Cause uh, as soon as he said, November 5th, I knew I was like, no, no, that's, you know, we're gonna have a conflict. And um, the seniors also just were able to hang out together. Uh, Rich and Terry Duvall had a great post-prom fundraiser at their uh, home over the weekend. And so that was another time that we were able to socialize as well as make progress towards uh, post-prom. Awesome, thank you, Mimi. I'm sorry that my back is to you. <laughs> so awkward. Uh, just a little update for our Lambs friends. I hope friends are Jen Wright, Donna Emiak could not be here. They did send a letter out to all the Lambs. They have seen a great response for the social that's also going to be held at CVP on October 27th from 6.30 to 9.30. And they are also collecting donations for the fashion show basket. And they are organizing a Lambs table at the fashion show, which is wonderful. I'm excited to have them. Uh, okay, new. moving on to new business, I would like to turn it over to Sina Cook, who's going to put her admissions hat on and tell us a little bit about Open House, which is coming up really soon. Thank you, Molly. Uh, yes, yeah, so admissions uh, is going very well, and I wanted to start off by thanking our admissions chairs, uh, Susan Lemansky, Amanda Buckler, and Jennifer Bennett. Um, they have attended some of our morning shadows uh, to host and welcome uh, prospective families. And they had an excellent idea of um, host parents calling shadow parents the day after. So when they shadow the student, they can call the parent and just give an extra wel welcome and knowing that their sons have been together the day prior. And it's been very well received and uh, just wanted to thank them publicly for that excellent idea. Uh, yes, open house is Sunday, October 24th from 10 to 1, and we're doing it in a different format this year. It's going to be a self-guided tour so that folks have the flexibility to come for as little or as long as they like that day. Also, they can focus on their areas of interest. So campus will really be alive with activity. There are going to be things happening in the classroom, on the fields, um, and everywhere in between. We are asking for volunteers so that we can guide people as they make their way around campus and asking for you to include areas of interest that your son has been involved in so that you can speak um, a little with a little more uh, experience and knowledge to the prospective families. We have about 20 folks signed up. We need, we're looking for about 40 or 42. So if you can and you're able uh, to come and help us that day, again, from roughly getting here 930 to one and also dads. Uh, I posted on the Mother's Club Facebook page inviting moms and dads to sign up. If you're available, we'd love to have you. And it really will make just for a more uh, successful day, the more smiling faces we have to receive and welcome uh, these families. So I appreciate your help in advance. And anyone who signs up, there will be a meeting, a Zoom meeting next Wednesday evening to learn of what your assignment is for the day and just kind of logistical instructions uh, from there, along with um, Stephen Abrams on the call as well. So, yes. 
So, so the, the uh, Zoom link has not been sent out yet, but we will send it out. Originally, they uh, the admissions chairs were going to have it Thursday evening. Today, they realized the conflict, so they're going to switch it to Wednesday. So they will create that Zoom link and we'll, we'll get it out and put it on the Mother's Club Facebook page so everyone has it in hand. Thank you. Thank you, Tina. Oh. So for, th for this particular sign up, just parents, uh, we're, we're going to manage uh, the student volunteers that we need separately. And um, one extra note, the sign up genius was in the e-weekly today. So if you have not signed up to attend open house as a volunteer, we still need 20 more folks. That's where you can find it in the e-weekly today. Thank you, Sina. Thank you. Okay, Harvest Potluck is coming up and I'm so excited. Um, it's October 28th, which is a Thursday at 6 p.m., a little earlier this year for daylight. Um, Jen Spiergus, Mary Smith, and Karen Lombardi have really done an outstanding job. They couldn't be here, so they asked me to share the following. Um, the potluck dinner will be outside in the tent um, so that you'll notice that the tent was removed in between Xavier and Knott. That was a tent Loyola rented. They have purchased the tent for the remainder of the year. I think they're looking for some good behavior from the boys with throwing away their trash. Uh, for eating outside and then the tent will be put back up shortly or so we hope because that's what we're planning on for the potluck so that will be a, a little bit more casual this year and everybody should dress um warmly for for that little fellowship outside so that will start at six o'clock at seven o'clock we will move inside into not hall where we will wear a mask due to the larger size of the event um the theme is to be a man for others, you must take care of yourself first, a discussion of mental well-being for adolescent boys and young men. And the speaker is Dr. Jason Goldstein, um, who works at Pavilion, Pavilion Pediatrics, and many of you probably see him as your pediatrician. Um, Karen Lombardi did send out a note to all those who have signed up on the Sign Up Genius thus far, asking uh, to submit questions via probably the Google poll or whatever. They're looking, they're not looking to have live questions um, just due to time constraints, but you're welcome to submit questions anonymously or specifically ahead of time, and then they will give them to the speaker. And I believe the counselors from school are also going to be on the panel as well. Um, right now, we are at 160 people, which is awesome. And our max, we are capped at 175. So the signups close this Friday and the sign up genius link was in the e-weekly today as well. The food signups are actually all full. Um, Jen wanted me to add that we are gonna be collecting items for the St. Vincent's Villa, which is a residential mental health facility for five to 14 year olds near Salamaris. I actually volunteered there and um, And more details will follow on what they're specifically collecting, but sounds like a really awesome night. I do know that the event will be recorded. So I think we're not going to be live streaming it uh, for a few reasons, but it will be, if you can't make it, not to fear, it will be recorded and we'll be sure to share it very timely. So that is Harvest Potluck. Katie Kuhn, would you like to give us a little teaser about our fashion show? Aileen, would you mind running home? Oh. Thank you so much. I think what important thing that I hope that you one spot right now. Anybody wants to come on? Yeah, 159. Okay. Thank you, Lindsay. Appreciate it. Go ahead, Katie. Hi, everybody. I'm Katie Coon, and along with Diane Becker, who's not here tonight, we are hosting for charity. It's scheduled for November the 14th. Um, so far, we sold, as of yesterday, 192 tickets, so sales are moving along. Um, the registration, I think, was just added last night to the Mother's Club Facebook page, so you can click the link to register. Um, we have a, a large group of really awesome moms who are working together on various different committees to put the baskets together and the, um, the grand raffle together, so really working hard. And, um, and I appreciate everybody who's worked hard on the baskets. I mean, I've heard so many of them are completed, which is 
so awesome. So thank you for all of that hard work. Um, we have some really great grand raffle um, prizes, which um, Anne Marie Shanewetter and Karen Lake have been working hard on. So I'm just going to run through them really quick so you guys know what they are. The tickets are going to be available starting next week. Um, they're going to be sent home via the boys. So we'll start in their backpacks. Um, I think all the boys are going to get seven tickets sent home. Um, they're going to be ten dollars for one, three for twenty-five, and you can purchase all seven for fifty. So um, and uh, they are going to need when the tickets come in, which should be sometime next week. They've been ordered. Um, they're going to every and Karen are going to need some help stuffing the envelopes for all the boys to bring home. So if anybody's interested in doing that. You can get touch with Anne Marie, and if you need to know how to get touch with you can ask me again. But really quickly, just to run through what the grand raffle prizes are going to be. The really great, um, I'm not going to be real specific about it, but I'll just give you a quick overview. The grand prize is going to be uh, um, tickets to uh, next year's, next season's Ravens game in the WBAL box. First prize is uh, Keep Me Young and Beautiful, um, so Botox and Filler. Um, uh, <laughs> um, the second prize would be Fit Don Mom, which is two months membership to Copper Mind with training and personal, personal training and some lessons. Third prize is a beautiful diamond necklace. Fourth prize is a backyard bash with live music and uh, live music by the Natty Boy versus Jamie Swartz has been Matt and um, and food and drinks and that thing. Um, so yeah, so it's all coming together. Um, hopefully, you guys will all be there. There's going to be lots of Hey Katie, if you buy your grand raffles at the time of registration, do you physically get them or you're just entered in and they're going to call your name? Um, my guess, I don't know for sure, but my guess is you're just um, entered in. Okay. So That's, That's how it was in uh, 2019. Yeah. I know. I, I bought it at registration. Okay. Yeah. No, um, I can tell you who to, who to it's Marcella who's in charge of the bike deck, so I, okay. yeah, I can mention her. Okay. Yeah, who's next? next Suzette has a question for Katie. I think Julie, I know I ran into Julie in the closet yesterday, actually. So, um, but it's good to keep in touch. Like, so Julie Springer and Kelly Pony are the basket chairs. So I would just reach out to them and make sure knowing them, they probably checked in with the visitor center, grabbed those things and took them to your. Right. But it's likely that I know she's been here a lot. So it's likely they probably grabbed them, but. It's a really fun day. I'm so excited we're doing it again. And it's it's nice to come on time for the event because that's when you can walk around and shop early. and yeah, come early, get and bring. I bought my drink ticket ahead of time, but it would only let me buy one. <laughs> so bring bring cash um, so you can buy because that's how the, the bar sells the, the drinks with cash. So but it's a really there's that's when you can view the baskets and when you can shop the different vendor tables. So it's, it's, and our wonderful bake table will be there. It's a lot of fun. Thanks to Katie for our alien for walking that to Jen Sipple. We have big news. Big news indeed. We are having the annual holiday cocktail party for the Paris this year. It will be on December 3rd, which is Friday this year. So we're not able to secure the Saturday like we have in the past. So it will be a Friday. We are looking for volunteers during the day to come in and decorate Not Hall. We're still trying to figure out the logistics a little bit of uh, using Not Hall just for social distancing. Um, whether we're gonna use the performance gym, maybe do something outside, uh, but we're still working on that. But we are looking for volunteers. We're uh, hoping to do stage dining again. Um, so looking to keep up the same format as we have in the past, the DJ, some lighting. Uh, so there'll be some information coming out the evening week uh, within the next couple of weeks, I think. And uh, we're looking forward to setting it up and going forward with that one this year. Yay, Jen, thank you. So if you want to get involved with that, um, you can reach out to myself or Jen Sipple or Jen Powers. Um, our bus chairs actually could not be here tonight. We are not going to New York on the bus trip due to COVID concerns. We just weren't sure of the volume of people on the bus, I suppose. 
So Maura and Kim will share an update about that next meeting, actually. And I'm sorry, Eileen, you just walked away because autumn is next. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I was trying to talk quickly know, before you came over. Terry's agenda that it was clear. Yeah. such a great idea about the Christmas stockings. I love it. Okay, moving right along. Old business, just one, one item. Jenny Nugent, Jill King, and Lauren Villavaso, our creative fundraising chairs, crushed it with the mom, the moms. And we sold almost 400 moms, guys. So thank you for everybody who bought one. I love mine. They are absolutely huge. They use Crow's Nursery, K-R-O-H, if you're familiar. They're Lula family and they were extremely generous with us. So we're very grateful to them. Um, and uh, a few are kind of placed around campus as well, if you want to get a look. So we, we're really, really pleased with our first fundraiser in a long time. So thank you everyone who participated. I'm just going to do our quick door fries. So Aileen, for all your hustle and bustle, would you please pick a number between one and 27? Uh, 11. Jen O'Malley, you come on down. You win our little door prize. Thank you for coming and being such a great rep. She has twins here, so you deserve a prize. <laughs> okay, um, Tina Bognet, our secretary, is going to close us out in prayer in the absence of Sarah. Thank you, Tina. Dear Heavenly Father, we are grateful for this time together and for the company of fellow mothers. We pray that we can go from this place with the renewed energy that comes from gathering together, enjoying unity with others, and fellowship with your spirit. We ask for safety as we travel home this evening and as we move about in our daily lives until we can meet again. Please guide our steps throughout the coming week so we can walk in love and grace. We thank you for this community and for our meeting this evening. Amen. Amen. Our next meeting is November 10th, which is also a Wednesday at 7 p.m. 
And it really is a gift to be able to gather in person. So thank you all for taking the time to come here tonight. And I wish your boys a productive October and you all a festive fall. Adjourn. Yay. <laughs>